From the primordial soup to the depths of astrobiology, Stanley Miller's work serves as a guiding light for scientists exploring the mysteries of life beyond our planet. His groundbreaking work, conducted in the 1950s, unlock secrets about the origins of life on Earth that still resonate today. But many still consider the findings controversial. New research is shedding light on alternative mechanisms that might be responsible for triggering the formation of life. Let's dive in and find out more. In the early 1950s, Stanley Miller, a graduate student at the University of Chicago, collaborated with his advisor Harold Urey to design an experiment aimed at simulating the conditions of the early Earth. They hypothesized that the atmosphere of the early Earth contained gases such as methane, ammonia, water vapor and hydrogen. These gases were believed to have been present before the development of the modern oxygen-rich atmosphere. Miller created a closed experiment consisting of a set of glass tubes and flasks. He filled the apparatus with a mixture of gases to mimic the presumed composition of the early Earth's atmosphere. Next, he introduced electrical discharges into the mixture to simulate lightning strikes. These discharges served as a source of energy akin to the lightning storms on early Earth. Over the course of just a few days, Miller observed significant chemical reactions occurring within the equipment. These reactions led to the formation of a variety of organic molecules, including amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, which are essential for life as we know it. The Miller-Urey experiment demonstrated that organic molecules, which are vital for life, could potentially form spontaneously under the right conditions. This provided evidence supporting the idea that life might have emerged from simple organic compounds on the primitive Earth. Stanley Miller's experiments had a profound impact on the field of abiogenesis and the study of the origin of life. It prompted further research into prebiotic chemistry, the conditions for the emergence of life and the search for life beyond Earth. While the experiment did not directly prove how life actually began on Earth, it provided strong support for the idea that the basic ingredients of life could have originated through natural processes. The results of these simulated conditions was the production of various organic molecules, including amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, the fundamental components of life. This experiment provided empirical evidence that the basic building blocks of life could have formed spontaneously under early Earth conditions. It suggested that the formation of organic compounds necessary for life might have been a relatively common occurrence on our planet billions of years ago. Stanley Miller's work had a profound impact on the field of astrobiology and the study of the origin of life. It sparked further research into prebiotic chemistry and the conditions necessary for life to emerge on Earth and potentially on other planets and moons in the universe. And now for a quick break. If you're anything like me, time is a precious resource in short supply. I often find myself engrossed in academic papers, leaving little room to delve into fully-fledged books. Enter Blinkist, an app that distills the essence of over 6,500 non-fiction books and podcasts into bite-sized 15-minute reads. One particularly intriguing addition is Blinkist Spaces. This feature allows you to create a shared space with friends or family where you can add, share and recommend titles from the vast Blinkist library, all within the app. Blinkist has been a time-saving lifeline for me, opening doors to books I wouldn't have had time to explore otherwise. For instance, I have long been captivated by the world of fungi and their ecological significance. And that's precisely why I hold Blinkist in high regard. It doesn't replace the act of reading books, rather it empowers you to explore books you'd otherwise lack time for and experiment with titles you might never have considered. Get 25% off Blinkist annual membership. Start your seven day free trial by clicking the link in the description. Now, let's get back to the video. Findings from the Miller-Urey experiment were initially somewhat controversial and generated specific discussions and debate within the scientific community. There were several reasons for this controversy. Number one, simplification of early Earth conditions. Some scientists argued that Miller's experiment oversimplified the complex and uncertain conditions of the early Earth. 
Well, Miller attempted to simulate the atmosphere as best as he could based on the knowledge available at the time, there was ongoing debate about the exact composition of early Earth's atmosphere. Some believed it might have contained different gases or had varying conditions. Number two, the duration of the experiment. The Miller-Urey experiment produced amino acids and other organic compounds in a matter of days which led some critics to suggest that the experiment was too short to be a realistic representation of the timescales involved in the origin of life. They argued that the process might have taken much longer on the actual early Earth. Number three, complexity of life's origin. While the experiment demonstrated the formation of amino acids, which are essential for life, it did not replicate the entire process of life's origin. The transition from simple organic molecules to self-replicating complex life forms remains a complex and unanswered question in science. And number four, controversy over amino acid chirality. Another aspect of the controversy was the fact that the amino acids produced in the experiments had a mixture of left-handed and right-handed forms, known as chirality. In living organisms, amino acids are exclusively of one chirality. Critics argued that this difference raised questions about whether the experiment truly replicated the conditions necessary for life. Despite these controversies and debates, Stanley Miller's work had a significant and lasting impact on the field of abiogenesis and the studies of the origin of life. It provided experimental evidence that the basic building blocks of life could potentially form under certain conditions opening the door to further research into prebiotic chemistry and the search for life beyond Earth. Over the years, subsequent research and discoveries have built upon Miller's pioneering work, and while some details of the experiments were debated, its fundamental message, the formation of organic molecules under plausible early Earth conditions is feasible, remains a foundational concept in the study of life's origin. In addition to his work on the Miller-Urey experiment, Stanley Miller had a long and productive career in the field of chemical evolution and biochemistry. He made important contributions to our understanding of the chemical processes that may have played a role in the emergence of life on Earth. Miller's legacy continues to influence researchers in the fields of astrobiology, origin of life studies and early Earth science. His work remains a testament to the curiosity and dedication of scientists in unravelling the mysteries of life's beginning. In recent years, some have raised questions about the pertinence of Stanley Miller's spark discharge experiment. Presently, the prevailing models for the composition of the early atmosphere of the Earth suggest an atmosphere that was nearly neutral, rather than the highly reducing gas mixture employed in the Miller-Urey experiment. In spark discharge experiments conducted under these neutral atmospheric conditions, the production of detectable amino acids has historically been scarce, if not entirely absent. Some more recent studies have suggested that the Earth's early atmosphere may not have had conditions suited to have significant lightning due to a fainter sun. So they started to look at an alternative energy source that could have kick-started life. They suggested that in the past, the sun was dimmer but would have had more powerful solar super flares. These launch high energy particles which interact with the Earth's ionosphere and the magnetic field can funnel them towards the poles. The main constituents of the solar wind are protons. They questioned if these flares could be the trigger required to form the building blocks of life. They created a mixture of gases that matched early Earth's atmosphere and bombarded it with protons and compared it to one where they used an electric discharge to simulate lightning. Their results showed that a methane concentration of about 0.5% which was exposed to protons produced detectable amounts of amino acids and carboxylic acids. By comparison, the discharge experiment required a methane concentration of over 15% to start producing detectable quantities, and this production rate was also a million times lower than compared to the proton exposed model. It is interesting that they focused so heavily on the proton bombardment and dismissed the electrical discharge angle when it is quite possible any solar event could lead to an increase in lightning through the solar particles striking the Earth. In any case, the study points out that they cannot rule out either a proton bombardment or electrical discharge synthesis. 
Stanley Miller considered that the simplicity with which he was able to create the precursors of life meant that we should be able to see it all across the universe. Not long ago, amino acids and other organic compounds were detected in the comas of comets WILD2 and 67P. In a recent study, a researcher discovered the existence of tryptophan, an amino acid essential for the formation of proteins and the development of living organisms within a stellar cloud system in the Perseus cloud. When they then estimated the temperature of the cloud, it came in at close to zero degrees Celsius. How and when such complex molecules form remains a subject that is debated. In the study, the researchers were able to show that it might be possible for glycine to form on the surface of icy dust grains, in the absence of energy, through dark chemistry. Now, dark chemistry is a term that refers to chemistry without the need for energetic radiation. In the laboratory, they simulated conditions for dark interstellar clouds. Here, they assume that these are composed of cold dust particles covered in thin layers of ice. Simply through impacting atoms, precursor species fragments were able to form, and eventually they were able to form glycine, but it required the presence of water ice to occur. From their work, they conclude that the molecules that are considered to be the building blocks of life can form at a stage well before the start of stars and planet formation. Their work might suggest that planets form later on and would ultimately include this material by default. Of course, the assumption that this is simply a cloud is somewhat misleading. We know that the Perseus cloud is composed of a long filament, and within this there are many smaller filament structures. These are composed of a mixture of neutral hydrogen and ionized hydrogen, as well as carbon monoxide and other elements. There are magnetic fields that we can detect, which probably originate from the movement of the ionized material forming the filaments. Could this mean that Miller's concept could be at work in these regions as well. While numerous inquiries remain to be addressed, it seems that Miller's simulated prebiotic synthesis process is resilient and likely prevalent throughout the universe. Beyond the specific findings of Miller's work, it fundamentally transformed the field of origin of life research from a primarily theoretical endeavour into an experimental one. This transformation has led to proliferation of data and innovative concepts in the decades that have ensued. Stanley, a modest and generous mentor, not only kindled the enthusiasm for scientific inquiry in those around him, but also left a lasting impression with his warmth and sense of humour. A big thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. If you would like to support the channel, then please check out the Blinkist link in the description below. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time. <laughs>